Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, how are you? Um, my name is Brandy. I am the owner and artisan behind Brushed by Brandy. Um, I'm also a brand ambassador for the Dixie Bell Paint Company, and I've been invited here on the Country Sampler Farmhouse Style page to do a little project with you guys today. So come on and let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you've ever used Dixie Bell Paint before. Um, you guys, my husband Sean is here. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to shoot them out and we'll try to answer your questions along the way. Um, but let's go ahead and get started because we have a lot of fun stuff to do. So the project that I chose to do today is we are going to actually pour um, resin. We're going to pour resin coasters and we're going to use do this using only Dixie Bell paint products. So I think you're going to find that this is it's a beautiful project, but I think it's um, less intimidating than most people think it is. Um, so what I'm starting out with is I bought these just at Home Depot. These are four by four inch ceramic tiles and you can get these in the tile department. These were 15 cents a piece. So they're really inexpensive. Pick up a few extra ones um, if you're just starting out and play around with them beforehand. Do a little sample set that you can you know, feel like you can experiment on because at 15 cents a piece, you can't go wrong. So I've got a set of four here because I want to make a set of coasters. And because I'm painting on a, a shiny, slick ceramic, the first thing that I'm going to start out doing is I'm going to prime these with Dixie Belle Slick Stick. So Dixie Belle Slick Stick is a um, gripping primer. It will help the paint bond to the tile because it, it's such a slick surface, it doesn't have anything to bite onto. So we're going to go ahead and just put a little coat of Slick Stick on these. So Slick Stick is really, really, really easy to use. It goes on just like a paint. Ah, it grips. <laughs> Once I've opened these containers, I can rarely get them open easily the second time. That's how I know that it works though, right? It's gripping. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little artist brush and my first tile here, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint on a coat of slick stick. Now it's white, so you're not gonna see it going on over the top, but once this dries, this will give my paint that something to bite onto. Super easy step. Okay, so that one's good. And I've already done these other three here. I'm gonna go ahead and redo this one only because I spilled paint on it. And I just wanna cover that up so it doesn't show through in my finished product. I'm gonna cover that little bit of colored paint on it. Okay. All right, so now once I've got my slick stick on there, um, we're going to pour some Dixie Belle paint. We're going to do a paint pour today. And Dixie Belle paint is a great product for pouring. And there's any number of things you can do a paint pour with. You can pour paint on canvas. You can pour paint on furniture. Um, anything you want. And it's a really cool look. So it's going to give us this kind of marbleized effect here. This is my sample. And do you see how the paint just kind of runs together and gives us this marbleized effect? That's the look we're going for. So on my samples, the colors that I use, this teal is Dixie Belle Antebellum Blue. I use Palmetto. This is their gold, which is called Gold Digger. And then I threw some glitter in just for fun. Um, the colors that I use today are gonna to be a little bit different. I wanted to use some holiday inspired colors. And I think of um, Buffalo Check right now is really hot. And so the colors I've got out are Dixie Belle Barn Red, which is my favorite of the reds. I've got Dixie Belle Caviar. I've got Cotton, which is their purest white. And then my silver and my gold, Silver Bullet and Gold Digger, because it's always fun to add in metallics. So I'm going to take these little medicine cups here. They're just little measuring cups. And I'm gonna pour a little tiny bit of paint into each one. It doesn't take a lot to do this at all. So we'll start out with my barn red. Rah. <laughs> Always with the lid. <laughs> I find a good bang on the floor and I can usually open it pretty well. There we go. Okay. All right. And I'm just gonna grab a little spoon and I'm gonna scoop out some of my barn red into this little cup right here. Again, it doesn't take a lot of paint. What's that, a couple tablespoons of paint maybe? 
So Dixie Belle is a water-based chalk mineral paint. And because it's water-based, it pours remarkably well. And I know when you're doing a paint pour, if you go onto YouTube, you'll find videos that say you need to have all these products like silicone and Floetrol and um, all different kinds of things. But because this is a water-based paint, I can do it with just water. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of my caviar I wouldn't use the same spoon, but I did. That's a bad habit. All right, I'm gonna put these away because that should be all I need. And then a little bit of our cotton, which is the white. out of my containers you guys which means I'm usually wiping paint onto the edges of them and then it seals them shut one bang on the floor and I'm usually okay okay a little bit of my cotton I won't use my same spoon for this one I'll use my brush okay Again, you guys, if you guys have any questions along the way, please feel free to pop on and ask any questions you have. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do one with our gold. Because I really am feeling the gold lately. There we go again. Should've opened these all beforehand, huh? And I've got gold glitter that I think I definitely wanna play with, so I'm gonna get out some gold. So that's a really pretty and festive kind of holiday inspired color combination. And I chose this project because I felt like it would be really cute for gifts for friends or family or just something um, small but still very practical. Now, um, I'm going to add a little bit of water to my paint and this is just gonna thin the paint out a little bit. Because we want to pour it, I want it to be a little thinner than the paint is naturally. So just a little bit of water because this is a water-based paint, that's all I need to add. And I'm just gonna stir it in. And that just thins the paint out a little bit so that when I pour it, it's gonna pour all that much easier. I might need to add a little bit of paint to that one. I think I got too much water. Just that few drops was too much. And I'm just using the handle of a paintbrush to stir them in. It's one thing I have a lot of easily accessible. Um, now you'll notice I'm not going to add any water to my gold paint and that's because the metallic paints are a little bit thinner already than the regular paints are so I find that they pour fine just right out of the container. So I'm not going to add anything to that gold paint that I poured. And a little bit of water into my white. Very, very, very little water. I mean, just a few drops to my couple tablespoons of paint. Just a few drops. You don't want it to be too thin because I still want to get coverage um, from my paint when I pour it. Now, I told you I thought I watered down my red a little bit too much, so I'm going to add a little bit more paint to that. And all I'm looking at is what's the consistency of it. Is it, it, it just looks like I thinned it out too much. So a little bit more paint will solve that problem. And I'm gonna stir it over this because now my container is really <laughs> full and it might spill out. That's okay. So I have a flat box here and I grab these at Costco just for when I wanna do projects like this and then I can just discard it when I'm all done and it will contain all of my mess today. Okay, so once I've got my three colors and they're mixed with their water, I can take and I can pour this directly on my tiles. And my tiles have already got my slick stick on them, so they're all primed. This one over here was the last one that we did, so it's kind of dry. You'll be able to tell that that slick stick is dry once it turns from a shiny wet finish to a matte finish. And that one's almost dry, so we'll head to that one last. But I'm gonna start with my red, and really with no rhyme or reason, you guys, this is so gratifying. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna form kind of a spout with my little cup here, and I'm just gonna pour it. Just kind of randomly all over my tiles. 
none of them are going to be the same. I, I will actually have probably too much paint here that I mixed up. I'm going to dry this tile really quick with my heat gun so that I can do that one at the same time. Because it's so close to being dry. There we go. Now I can do an official set of four with you guys. All right, and a little bit of red on this. And I like them all to be different. So I don't try to pour them the same at all with a little bit of randomness. And now I'm gonna come back and I've got my black paint here. This is Dixie Belle Caviar. And then I'm gonna make a little spout with my cup and same thing, I'm just gonna pour this where I don't already have red. This is a great project for kids, you guys. I have three children at home and my kids would love to do this project with me. Because there's really no way you can go wrong with it. So that was my caviar. Let's come back with a little bit of cotton and then we'll add our metallic in there. So cotton is a really pure Dixie Belle white. And this probably could have used a little bit more water. I say that just because I'm noticing it's a little slow to pour out of the container and I want it to pour easily, but that's okay. We're going to make it work. I just started in a little bit better. Yeah, and that helped. Okay, so I went lighter on the white. I don't want quite as much white and now I'm going to come back with my gold. So this is my Dixie Bell Gold Digger. Now, meanwhile, while, while I'm doing this, you guys might notice the paint colors are starting to run together and that's okay because that's what I want them to do anyway. So they're just starting a little bit ahead of me because the paint does most of the work in this project. See, I'm getting some really pretty running together. So now I'm just gonna pick them up and I'm gonna help it along a little bit. I'm gonna kind of guide that paint. I wanna get coverage on all my edges See, you can just watch it kind of flow. That's what the water did. It just helped the paint kind of flow a little bit better. Sorry, I'm moving this all around as I'm trying to get it on camera for you guys. But do you see how I'm getting some really pretty spots where the paint has kind of flowed together? And if I have some spots that I feel like aren't getting as much coverage as I like, I can take and add a little bit of paint there. So I'm gonna add a black spot right here. And let's see, we'll put a little bit of white over here. I can fill it in as I go too. So I'm gonna set this one here and come on and start working another one. I'm gonna let it flow and then I can come back and kind of move it around. I know this was not the intention, but these are 49er colors. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was <laughs> thinking of. <laughs> We are not a sports family. I thought they were kind of holiday kinda, inspired, but yeah, apparently I, I, I kind of figured you them. can Speaking absolutely out of context, do them yeah. for your favorite sports team. There you go. I'm adding a little bit more gold, a little bit more red on my edges here. Okay, and then I'll set that one. And then I can turn this first one I did, I can turn it to go a different way and then the paint will start running a different way. Same thing. So that one's ran down. Now I'm gonna turn it and let it run sideways a little bit. It's really gratifying, you guys. I'll turn it again. Once I have coverage on all four of my sides, and it's okay if it starts dripping off the edges because I do want the edges of my tile to get covered too. That one's doing really good. It's got some really cool spots on it. So that one, it ran down the edge. Now I'm gonna let it run down the bottom. We'll come back and do this one. This one I feel like is kind of naked. It's gonna need some more paint on it. So it feels like it's a lot of paint that I'm going through, but I mean, you remember that this was only 
probably a tablespoon of each color. And you see how you'll be thankful you have the flat box underneath you? Make sure you cover your work surface because this will be a messy project. This one I have to show you because look how cool that is. Can you see that spot right there? That's just the paint. I didn't add anything but water to my paint. So it just does that running together by itself. And it's going to create all this cool marvelization and pattern in the paint itself. If you want to help it along the way, you can give your paint a little spritz of water, barely any water. And here, let me show you what it just did. It's just going to start that paint kind of running into each other. That was just a little spritz of water in this area right here. But if you find that it's gotten stuck up in an area, add a little bit more moisture somewhere. So whether that's with water or adding a little bit more paint, you can do it either way. So this one has advanced quickly, more quickly than the others. And I've got all my edges covered. Now it's gonna cover around to the back and we're gonna fix that. You'll see what we'll do with that at the end. So I'm gonna start drying this one so we can go on to the next step, which is to cover these in resin. And in the meantime, I'm gonna watch these other ones that we've kind of got dripping here and I'll keep turning them. So my paint is dripping in all different directions. So I get coverage on all of my tile, but I like the pattern on this and I'm all covered on all my sides. So I'm gonna dry this paint. Just backing up so you don't hear it so loud on the video. Yeah, sorry. When you're drying paint with a heat gun, you guys, you wanna make sure that you're not concentrating all your heat in one area too much. And you also wanna make sure um, that you're moving your gun around. The reason for that is it can start your paint bubbling so hold it a little bit back from your paint and move your gun around when you're trying to dry paint with a heat gun. A hair dryer also works really well. And I can see my paint is drying because it's turning from that shiny to a matte finish. I really like the center of this one. I'm gonna turn this guy again while I'm drying my paint. Trying to pay attention to these guys still. Okay, this one's pretty close behind it for being done. I'm gonna do one more turn on this one. And then I'm looking at how the colors are running together on this one and I feel like it kind of got neglected on the gold. And so I'm gonna add in a little bit more. Now my gold has started to set up in my cup so I'm gonna add a little bit more water to keep it workable. And then I can pour this little tiny bit I've got left in this cup. And I can pour it right on top of the other paint too, because it's still wet. It's just gonna run into that other paint. It's just a really cool project, but see how this ran together? It's got, it looks like a little river in there and the gold into the black, it's beautiful. So let's see, we'll let this run this way now. And how are these guys doing? All right, this one's looking pretty good too. I'll probably need to let it run this way a little bit. Okay, but I think this guy's ready that we can do the final step on. So the next step is I wanna protect this paint. Right now I've just got dried paint on top of the tile and now I wanna protect it. And I'm gonna do that with resin. So we are going to do a resin pour. So I'm gonna take two just regular plain solo cups. You know what, let me get some new ones. Those have been just that are clean. Now everything I'm using today, you guys, you can get at the link I put above in the post. That's to the Dixie Bell Paint website. And Dixie Bell carries all of these products. So they carry this. This is called, this is um, EnviroTex Pour-On Resin. 
comes in a container like this. And I think resin is intimidating for a lot of people and it doesn't need to be because it's actually a really fun product to play with. So you get two parts in there. You get an A and a B part. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio that I want to mix these in. And nothing's going to happen with them until I mix them together. So I can take, and I'm just using a measuring spoon that I robbed from my kitchen because I do want, you do want the A, the part A and the B to be equally mixed. So use some kind of measuring cup or something so that you know that you're mixing equal parts. And then I just have out some popsicle sticks that I can kind of clean that spoon out. This is really thick stuff. It doesn't, um, it's not as thin and liquidy as the paint was when we added the little bit of water to it. It's really nice and thick. And I think I'm going to do two tablespoons of each. Okay. You can always mix more. So the nice thing about this resin is it does have a 10 hour setup time. Right, this one's 10 hours. I believe it's 10 hours. Um, which means that it's got a nice long working time. So you can play around with it for a good amount of time. You don't have to feel rushed in doing this. And then I'm gonna take my part B and I'm gonna use one of these little guys because I don't wanna put it back on that spoon where I've already um, put the other part of my resin. Let me find the right mark on here. As it just starts chugging out. It actually doesn't, this one doesn't go very quickly. You can see it's thick, it's slow it's like syrup. a syrup, yeah. Whereas when we thinned the paint out, the paint got, you know, kind of thin and watery, so it would pour. This is much thicker. So I'm not using a lot of resin, but when I look at this, I want to make sure that my amounts are fairly close. So this one I feel like is a little bit shy. I'm going to add a little bit more resin. I'm using the marks on my cup as a guide. So I'm dripping this resin off my stick. Okay. I actually think I'm going to end up needing more. <laughs> All precise. This, and then this you're is, like, how, I, eh, this whatever. is how I cook, by the way. <laughs> this is what everything in my life is. I'm just going to avoid that there measuring more. spoon. All right. I'm, let me check my coasters really quick. Yeah, this is doing pretty good. I'm going to give it a little spritz of water because it's it wants to run off the edge, but it's just stuck a little bit right there. That'll help it just run off that last edge. This one looks done. That's really cool colors, too. This guy I'm going to give a turn. Okay. So I'm still kind of paying attention to those guys at the same time. So that was this one. Let's do a little bit more of this one. Okay, that's, can you guys see that? I'm using the lines on my cup as a guide and those are pretty equal. So I feel pretty confident that this is gonna be a good mix. So then I will take one cup and once I pour it into the other one, that's where the magic starts happening. Spatula would probably make my life much easier right now. Okay, I'm going to clean this cup out the best that I can. And then I'm going to start mixing. And you want to stir each time for about three minutes. Now we're going to accelerate that for, for camera time. 
You want to scoop it all up from the bottom, get it really well mixed in. And then I'm going to take it, I'm going to pour it back into my original cup and I'm going to remix it in there. So I always do two pours with this type of resin and that ensures that I'm scooping everything up from the bottom and pulling it to the top, but it, you want to make sure that it's really well mixed. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to pour it back into the second cup and we're going to mix it again. Doing the same thing I did with the original cup where I scoop it all up from the bottom and then same thing, I'm just going to stir this one again. So ideally this would be about three minutes that you're stirring in each cup. And that's not a lot of resin that I mixed at all. It's only, you know, a few tablespoons, maybe what, a quarter of a cup I've got there. A quarter of an eight ounce cup, so two ounces of resin, three ounces maybe. Okay. I want to come back to these guys because I feel like these guys have ran as much as I want them to. Like that's a really cool pattern there. This guy's a little slow for some reason. We don't want to make fun of him, but he's not quite cooperating. So we'll do three, but I'm going to dry these really quick so we can do all three of them together. My resin is fine just sitting in the cup right there because it's got such a long setup time. It's nothing's going to happen. We just poured that. It's still fairly new. Um, it doesn't do anything for about eight hours. This paint on these coasters is a little bit thicker than usual, so it does take a couple minutes to dry. attention to number four over here and he's just not looking how I want. I'm actually going to add a little bit of black paint into this right here. I'll add a little bit more white too. So I can keep playing with this until I get the look that I want and this one is not it so far. All right you guys you ready to see how you pour this resin? So all we're going to do, and I'm going to start with this one that I dried first. Let me move all my stuff out of the way. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop a little bit onto the center of this tile. And the resin will self-level. It's going to start finding my edges for me. It will flow out to the edges. You want to make sure you're doing this on a level surface. So not your table that's got three legs on it. That would not be a good table to work on. Would you keep a table with three legs on it? <laughs> Maybe. I'd probably paint it. You'd probably keep it. I'm just going to let this resin find its way out to the edges. I'm going to help it along a little bit. And it is going to drip over the edges of my tile. I don't want it so thick that it's just flowing freely over the edges. You don't need that much. I just need enough that it's going to cover the surface area of my tile. So because it's nice and thick, I can just kind of scoop it around and assist it off the edges a little bit. You can even use your finger for this. I would put a glove on if you're going to use your fingers, but you can totally put your fingers in this and just help it find all those edges. Turn this guy. And how are we doing over here? Okay. 
I see it dripping off one side, so I'm adding a little bit more onto this side over here. All right, so now they're nice and covered and I am gonna use my fingers. I live to get messy. But I feel like I have more control with my fingers. So I'm just gonna throw a glove on. And then I can push this out to the edges using my finger. Any spots that are kind of bare, you just assist it a little bit and it'll find the rest of the way for you. So cool. This one's doing pretty good over here. Am I filming my Christmas gift? Oh, yeah, surprise. That's not tacky, is it? Now, my paint is still wetter than I'd like it to be. So I'm nervous to disturb my paint too much. So I'm just going to turn these. This one's probably still my best one here. Okay, so once I've got them good and covered, this one I'm not quite sure about. There we go. Add some bare spots on here. I guess that's a good thing as far as the uh, dry time. Yeah, it's got a really long dry time. Still paying attention to this one here that's kind of dripping. I'm gonna add some water to it. I don't know, I'm just not liking the look of this one, but that's okay because I can re-pour it if I don't like how the paint runs together. I just feel like that one's not quite as good of a match. You guys see that resin dripping off the sides? Okay, so then once it's poured, I'm going to take this little kitchen torch here and I use this just to remove the air bubbles. So just a little bit of heat. I don't know, can you, I really want to show this because it's really, really cool and you won't know until you do it what it looks I'm like. I'm to catch the sheen so I can see Can you bubbles. see the little air bubbles that are right here? That's a good spot. There's kind I'm of a big guy that. right there. I point with this. There's a big air bubble right there quite a few in here. Watch what happens when I hit it with the torch. Can you guys just see them pop right out? Yeah, it's probably hard to tell on camera, but I can see visually with my eyes that all of those air bubbles just disappear from the resin. Like a shrink wrap. That's all the torch is doing is popping those air bubbles for me. And sometimes you can't even see them, they're so tiny, but you just notice that there was a cloud in your resin that's not there anymore. This makes it glassy smooth. And this is just a little kitchen torch. That's almost out of fuel. Yeah, it just refills with lighters, with like cigarette lighters. But we're not smokers, so it's hard to find cigarette lighters. And then, Okay, once I've hit all my air bubbles out, all I really have to do is let these sit overnight 
and let that resin set up. This one's got some unevenness in the resin. I want to didn't quite get over to this one side. Let me get a little bit more from my cup. There we go. I didn't notice that before, but I just saw that it's missing some on this corner here. I mean, they're like glassy smooth. I don't even know if you can tell that on camera. Got a couple of hits on that one. Okay. It really helps to look at it kind of sideways. Oh, there we go. So you can see, oh yeah, on this edge, huh? No, this one. Here, here, oh, yeah. here. So I can see where the light is shining on it, and that's just spots where it doesn't have, the resin didn't cover on it. And I can just mix more for my fourth coaster once it finally decides to cooperate with the paint. I can just mix a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and hit the edges to make sure that it's getting all the edges too. There we go. This is a fun project, you guys. I enjoy doing this. All right, now because I've just added a little bit more, I'm going to hit those with my torch one more time. Beautiful. So from here, I can let these dry overnight. It's going to take overnight for that resin to set up. So I would leave these sitting exactly where they are overnight. Oh, there we go. That's pretty cool. So I'll let that one dry and then I can come pour the resin on top. But each one is a little bit different. Get this one a little bit more gold. And I have plenty of paint left where I could do multiple sets of these all at one time. So from there, I will let it set up and overnight. And when you wake up the next morning, they're going to be... My Christmas gift? <laughs> the <top> card. <laughs> so from there, what I, all I'll do is I'll take... This is a cork shelf liner. And it comes with an adhesive back. I just got it at Lowe's. And I'll take my cork shelf liner. And I can put my tile right onto the shelf liner. And I got myself a razor blade. Hang on, let me grab a razor blade. You get one? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got razor blades all over this. Okay. This is not a child safe work zone. And I will just cut my cork shelf liner to the size of my tile. You could use felt dots for this too, but this will just take that gross back that ends up with paint on it and with this little bit of adhesive shelf liner. You just stick that right over the top and now it won't mark any furniture. Just press it down because it's got adhesive on it. And then I can come back and trim the edges up, also with a razor blade. I just run them along the run my razor blade along the edges of my cork, and that will trim those edges up. 
And then I've got a nice backing on there that makes it look nice and clean. And this could go on a coffee table and keep, you know, moisture off your coffee table and such. So I'm going to let these hang out and dry overnight. Once they're all done, I'll take photos of them so you guys can see how they turn out. But I think they're really cool. I think they're really cool. So I'm just going to let this dry overnight. And other than that, we did that all in just that little bit of time. So I'm super excited. It's really fun. Um, anyway, you guys, if you guys like that project, go check out Dixie Bell Paint. Um, Dixie Bell Paint Company on Facebook, Instagram. They have a great YouTube channel. Um, and my name is Brandy. I'm with Brush by Brandy. I paint with you guys live on the Dixie Bell Paint page every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, thank you so much to Country Sampler Farmhouse Style for having us on to show you guys a fun, different kind of project. And um, I'll let you guys go. Everyone have a Merry Christmas and thank you so much for having me.